Do Rhode Islanders know 100 ways to cook a clam? Does Rhode Island have the worst potholes in the country? And do all roadies have an inferiority complex? We'll answer those questions and more. So grab your coffee, milk, and or your Dells. We're going to unbox the state of Rhode Island. Wow, look at the beautiful sandy beaches and the crystal clear water. Who wouldn't want to live here? This looks so peaceful and comforting. <laughs> That's not Rhode Island. This is Rhode Island, a much less warm and comforting place. It's located in New England. And in case you didn't know, it's not even an island. Although, as we'll see later, it does have islands within its borders. A place with funny accents and towns with hard to say names, Rhode Island has a lot going on within its teeny little borders. And a lot of people don't even know where Rhode Island is. See it? How about now? See it? See it? This is the smallest state in the country. It's only 1,200 square miles. It's 48 miles tall and only 38 miles wide. It's about the same size as Yosemite National Park. In fact, the city of Anchorage, Alaska is bigger than the whole state of Rhode Island. And you could fit 552 Rhode Islands inside of Alaska. You can drive across this whole state in about 40 minutes. For many Americans, it takes 40 minutes just to get to the highway on their way to work in the morning. But to get a complete understanding of Little Rhodey, you have to look at this entire state from a higher level and then learn about each region's various differences. This is Rhode Island. The first thing you'll notice is it's small, but no matter where you want to live, whether it's along the ocean or in a big city or way out in the woods, you can find it here. I mean, there's only 39 cities and towns in this whole state. We'll begin up here in the northwest corner of the state. Over here along the border with Massachusetts and Connecticut, it's mostly farms and trees. Rhode Island grows apples and sweet corn and produces a lot of milk. But not too far away from that, and you have Woonsocket up here along the Massachusetts border. It's a crummy community that some would refer to as a ghetto. This is a former mill town that's seen better days, but is still the headquarters for CVS, so that's a big deal. And at least they have egg roll and jazz. It's a Rhode Island thing. And oh, it's so good. Further east in this corner of the state up here are more old mill towns along with nicer neighborhoods where people commute into Boston or flee Boston for a quieter life. A little bit south there is Pawtucket, which is a straight ghetto. While Providence managed to get its crap figured out, Pawtucket never had a mayor to lead the way to revitalization. To make things worse, their baseball team, the Pawtucket Red Sox, recently moved to an even crummier place, Worcester, Mass, after the 2020 season ended. That's like getting dumped for somebody on welfare. Like Woonsocket, Pawtucket's a former mill town that's seen better days. But Hasbro's headquartered here. Everybody loves Hasbro. My little pony, my pony. There's no one else like you around. My little pony, flutter pony. In Lincoln, just a few miles outside of Pawtucket, is the Twin River Casino. Lots of roadies go there to lose their money because, God forbid, they have to travel all the way to Foxwoods. And then we have the Providence metro area. There's 180,000 people here. About one in six Rhode Islanders live in this city alone. Now in the 70s, Providence was a dump, but then Buddy Cianci finally figured it out and Providence got really great in the 90s. It was a great place to live. And now over the last decade, it's gone downhill quite a bit again, especially crime-wise. It's not as bad as it was in the 70s though. This is the beating heart of Rhode Island. There's a lot to do here and there's historic architecture and even cobblestone streets. There's a thing they do called water fire, where they light the water on fire, or there's statues that are on fire. People come from all over to watch it. Jobs wise, this is where most people make their money. Three Fortune 500 companies and the very prestigious Brown University are all here. Oh yeah, and there's the big blue bug. South of town is a big blue bug on top of the old New England Pest Control Building. It's 58 feet long. Sometimes they dress it up. His name is Nibbles Woodaway. People love him. New England Pest Control, the home of the Big Blue Bug. Providence is the most diverse part of Rhode Island, and as such, it's not as roadie here, meaning the people who live here don't follow as many of the traditions as many people in other parts of the state. Home to many transplants, that also means people here are a lot nicer than folks in the rest of the state, too. At least, that's the word on the street. However, the Providence suburbs might be the roadiest of all roadies. The south side of Providence is poor and dangerous. The east side is much wealthier. There are also a lot of Portuguese who settled in East Providence. In fact, 41% of the people in East Providence are Portuguese, or at least claim to be. I don't know why they'd lie about that. I mean, it's Portugal. It's not fancy or anything. 
Now over here in Johnston and Cranston are the Italians. According to census numbers, nearly half the people located on the Johnston-Cranston border are Italian. And at 20%, Rhode Island has more Italians than any other state in the country. And 18% of the state claims to be Irish too. So on St. Patrick's Day, the Irish get drunk. And then two days later, the Italians eat too much Zeppelis and Soupy on St. Joseph's Day. That's another Catholic holiday. 42% of this state identifies as Catholic. This part of the state's fairly rural and understandably Republican. There are also tracks of forests and, of course, rednecks. Every state has rednecks. As you get closer to the coast, you'll find, again, more Italians down in Westerly. And then along the coast are charming beach towns. Watch Hill is where Taylor Swift has a mansion. Miss Quamacut's a great beach community. People from Connecticut go there and litter every summer. It's also where Rhode Islanders go if they don't want to make the trek to Narragansett or Scarborough. Narragansett is a gem along the coast that also gets too many tourists in the summer. Rhode Island has 384 miles of coastline, which is the reason they call it the Ocean State. The water along Rhode Island's beaches is cold, and this area gets hit by nor'easters, which are wicked hurricane-like things that wreck shit. For the most part, Rhode Island is the mildest of all New England states. Winters aren't extremely brutal. Summers can be hot and humid in the peak months. The University of Rhode Island is here, and then south of Providence is a mix of farms and nice communities with people who shop at Trader Joe's. The eastern shore is very affluent and quaint. Places like Bristol and Warren and Barrington are very nice, along with the communities of Tiverton and Little Compton. There's a lot of sailing and boating and water sporting over here. Folks here are far wealthier than in other parts of the state. They are also the least likely to be traditional roadie, meaning they are more insulated and less likely to mingle with general roadies. Does that make them snobs? Ask them that. Jamestown is also home to rich people on Connecticut Island. If you want to live on an island in Rhode Island, go to Jamestown. It's much more affordable. It's a small community. They go to magnet schools and there's basically no poverty. And finally, we have Newport. This may be one of the last places in the state that many Rhode Islanders can afford. There's a bunch of historic mansions in an area called the Breakers and there's a super amazing waterfront marina with a charming boardwalk. This is where much of the old money is. They have a bunch of festivals here and they make awesome fudge, but the locals will tell you that the tourists are everywhere and the best beaches are over the bridge in Narragansett. However, Newport isn't just a rich enclave. In fact, it actually has the 10th highest number of people below the poverty level. This island, which also includes Portsmouth and Middletown, is where the name Rhode Island came from a long time ago when they first named this area. The rest of the state was called the Providence Plantations. So, the original state name was Rhode Island and the Providence Plantations. Oh, and don't forget about Block Island, on which there are cute little towns filled with boutiques, restaurants, and art galleries. Sail away on the Black Island Ferry, take a trip back to Carefree Times. Be today, Black Island awaits you, just leave your troubles behind. Sail away on the Black Island Ferry, take a trip back to Carefree Times. Dun, 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 dun. Oh wait, we didn't mention Situate, Quantaquantog, or Weekapog. The state has a lot of goofy names for its towns, actually. Why? Native Americans. What's this? What's this? It's the jacket. The jacket. The jacket. I took off Rocco de Mayo. They're giving you cue, Peter. <laughs> Who the hell's idea was it to make this shoot out of foam rubber? It's such an honor to play the magic clam. Aren't you proud of your dad, kids? The inhabitants of Rhode Island are a cross between the Sopranos and Family Guy. They're very complex, reserved, but also friendly, grumpy and cranky, but humble, simple and practical, and the last to follow trends, laid back, but also insecure. A poll indicated that roadies have the least state pride of all. It might not be just because they don't love their state, but instead perhaps could be due to the state's inferiority complex. Just quick Google turns up a lot of people who say they love Rhode Island, but also many people who say it's the worst state of all. Aw, that's not nice. So what gives? Let's ask Matt Cariolo, a Rhode Island expert. I, I, I would definitely say don't believe the people who tell you that Rhode Islanders are in, in 50th place for, for state pride because it is just a big, fat lie. Um, I mean, in all seriousness, I, I mean, I know that when I became a full-time Rhode Islander, I was excited. I, I was really excited to become a full-time Rhode Islander because the place just has so much culture to it, you know? Um, sophisticated culture, not sophisticated culture, 
whatever, you know, you put it all together. It's just a fascinating place to be and to, and, and to experience being in. So, I mean, I know I'm proud to be a Rhode Islander. And I think a lot of Rhode Islanders are very proud to be Rhode Islanders. Maybe some people are big time detractors, um, but there are an awful lot of people, I would say, who would balance that out, who are really big, big fans of the state, and rightfully so. It's a great state. The state's tiny, so it's not surprising that in the nation's smallest state, everybody knows each other's business. When everybody's mother knows everybody's brother who knows your grandma, there's no such thing as under the radar here, pal. But are people here unfriendly or just aloof? Or are they pessimistic? Or is it Rhode Islanders' natural self-defense mechanism? Maybe a little of all of them. But there are four things that all Rhode Islanders can agree on. They're terrible drivers, the roads are horrible, the taxes and corruption are historically deplorable, and the food is great. Rhode Island drivers rank as the fifth worst in the country. Why? Well, they're aggressive, for starters. If you're not going over 15 miles an hour over the speed limit, you're going to get tailgated, or flipped off, or both. Nobody uses a blinka. It's jam-packed, and in the tourist season, roads can get pretty busy. And it's not like people have very far to go. Come on, this place is tiny. Is Rhode Island poorly managed? Well, if you look at the roads, you'd think it was. One insurance company says Rhode Island has the worst roads in the entire country. Now, why would this be? Mismanagement by the Rhode Island Department of Transportation. I mean, they spend $165,000 per year per mile on these roads and bridges. Many people have a hard time understanding where all that money goes. One solution to fix them has been to charge the big rigs passing through. Rhode Island also has very high taxes. In fact, this little state has the eighth worst taxes overall in the country, including the eighth highest property taxes and the second highest car registration costs. So you'd think the roads would be well maintained. The government corruption here doesn't help. It's said that if you want to get something done around here, you have to hand over your request in a number 10 envelope. We mentioned Buddy Cianci earlier. He spent four and a half years in jail for felonies. The state of Rhode Island has budget deficits and liberal spending, especially on the safety net that's required to keep the folks in Providence fed. Culture-wise, it would be hard to find a state where the food and tradition run so deep. Perhaps that's because it's such a small, close-knit community. It's like the culture exists in a little bubble here. Rhode Islanders love to eat, especially at restaurants and they have a truly unique cuisine as part of their heritage. They love their coffee milk, which is kind of like a chocolate milk, but they use coffee syrup. They also love their Dell's Lemonade, which is kind of a homemade slush with lemon zest and seeds if you get it at the right place. Food-wise, it's a lot of lobster rolls and hot wieners and pizza strips. They love their donuts in Rhode Island too. The Providence metropolitan area has the most donut shops per capita than any other place in the US. There's actually more Dunkin' Donuts here per capita than in any other state too. Rhode Island also has its own chain of donut shops called Best Eaton, which expanded into neighboring states many years ago and then went out of business and then came back into business and now is sadly only found mostly in South County. But there's nothing that compares to the clams here. They've got bigger and sweeter quahogs, razor clams, and cherry stone clams than anywhere else. Clam strips, clam bellies, clam cakes, duffies, and steamers. But it's the chowder that they're proud of the most. The way they make their chowder is different than most other places. One type uses a clear clam broth, and some other people use a chicken broth. There's a milky cream-based chowder, and there's a tomato-based chowder, too. This stuff looks gross. Isn't there a Long John Silver's anywhere in town? Long John Silver's? What the? This is homemade seafood sourced locally and made with Karen tradition, Karen. Not that Chinese crap shipped from overseas. Mom, isn't there a Red Lobster? Shut up, kid. Here's Adele's. Yum, thanks. Hey, Mappy, here's a bunch of money. Go take the kids cohogging and then pop for a round of cabinets, would you? Thanks, Nick. You're the best. I know I am. There's a dictionary on Rhode Island that Matt owns, and he read an excerpt about the specifics of the Rhode Island chowder. My grandfather, Alma, still makes the best chowder in the state. Every August, he goes down cellar and stirs up 20 gallons, clams, clam juice, onions, potatoes, and salt pork. And of course, Matt reads that off in the perfect Rhode Island accent because Rhode Islanders talk so roady. Another funny thing about Rhode Islanders is oftentimes they'll refer to places that aren't really there anymore. So they might say like, you know, I found this great new shop. It's right next to where the taco maker used to be. <laughs> or yeah. if, if somebody is asking for directions, they'll say, oh yeah, you go down and make it right where Almax used to be. And then if you get to where Benny's used to be, then you've gone too far. And Almax and Benny's are both defunct uh, companies that were in Rhode Island. So anyone who isn't from there is going to be clueless as to what the heck you're talking about. 
But again, it's just embracing the past and embracing that community. It's a very tight knit sort of community. There's a few other things about Rhode Island that Matt talked about too. Here's one. They give you a sampling of the Rhode Island accent. Um, you know, there are ours that disappear from the ends of words and reappear at the ends of other words. So a great example of this is the name Tina Turner. A Rhode Islander will pronounce this Tina Turner. <laughs> yeah. and, and whereas someone from somewhere like say Boston or Maine or something might, you know, pronounce something ending with the letters E-R-S um, as uh, as, a Rhode Islander would pronounce it more as sort of is. So it's like computers would be pronounced as computers or followers would be pronounced as followers. So it's kind of distinctly different. You know, people have said that it's a little like a cross between a Brooklyn accent and a Boston accent, which makes sense geographically. Um, so it, it's, it's its own unique thing. Rhode Island, the land of lobsters and mobsters, a tight knit group which keeps its stereotypes and history alive and well. They're a fiercely independent bunch, full of cronyism, myopic government spending, great beaches, and some of the best food in the East Coast. It's a small state with a big identity, a place where future poor leadership may cause this state's stability to erode. But hopefully not. Hopefully they can hang on to their traditions and their customs and their quirks, because that's what makes it such a special place. Well, that's pretty much Rhode Island in a neat little summary, and we didn't even have time to talk about everything, like how funeral processions are a big deal, or how everybody loves cellos and Greg's and Uncle Tony's pizza and pasta and Walt's roast beef, but we have to go. Grandma just got here with her Quahog chowder, and if I don't get to the kitchen soon, it's gonna be gone. It's 10 o'clock on Sunday and the weather's driving me to scream. If I could just get to that clam shack, it would be a come true dream. Make it there, but you can tell that things aren't gonna go very well. The clams are gone and I'm withdrawn, and so I guess I'll pound a Dells. It's just another roadie Sunday. It's an eat a clam fun day. It's a chowder run day It's a quahog one day It's just another roadie Sunday These are the days when you wish the roads were really paved Cause they never are Thanks to Matt Cariolo who is super educated about Rhode Island and an all around swell guy His insights helped me with this video tremendously Here he is enjoying a big blue bug awful awful at Newport Creamery it was a blue raspberry flavor with sprinkles. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.